Hi, I'm Neil, and you're listening to The Whaler Podcast, a series where we sit down for a fireside chat with luminaries from the creative industry to learn how they got to where they are, how they feel about the current advertising landscape, and what keeps them up at night. In this episode, I'm joined by Juan Penvedes, otherwise known as Kike, the global head of creative and media at Nestle. Kike is at the helm of driving creativity at the largest food company in the world that recently celebrated its 150th anniversary. Kike, thank you very much for, for joining me today. My pleasure. Um, for this. I would love to just start off with a little bit about your journey and you know where you started off in your career that's gotten you all the way now to be VP of Creative and Media at Nestle. Uh, I would say my career looks more like, like a, in a sense, like a traditional one. I started my career in the world of brands as, a, you know, the usual thing, an assistant brand manager, and then a brand manager, and then a brand director. And, right. Uh, what was your first brand that you worked for? Uh, I work at Coke. You know, I okay. had my previous life before joining Nestle was at Coke. I haven't worked in that many uh, uh, that many places though. Uh, probably because I'm, you know, more of a I have a Gen Xer approach <laughs> rather than the new, uh, the, the millennial one. Uh, but I've been my entire life in the world of brands. You know, again following the the usual path. You know, and that I know that I, that is changing and it's not necessarily looks the same. But again. See some brand manager, brand manager, Coke, Coke Light were the two of the first brands that I had the uh, the opportunity to work with, to handle as a marketer. And uh, then after uh, uh, some years at Coke, then I uh, switched, I moved to uh, Nestle, uh, which uh, in a sense, you know, set, uh, I would say, wonderful and new exciting challenges for me. Mm-hmm. You know, the beauty of Nestle is that you are not necessarily as stuck in one category. You can start your day by, you know, by having a discussion around uh, coffee and then move from coffee to uh, ice cream and then from ice cream to uh, uh, baby food and then from baby food to uh, uh, skin care hmm. or, uh, or health science. It's a, I always call it kind of a Navy uh, SEAL training as a marketer. You right. know, it's a constant... Uh, constant jumping on off from different categories. When you learn that there are uh, sometimes, you know, you will see massive, massive differences, but also suddenly something that I very quickly learned is that you can apply to a completely different category, something that you have learned from, uh, from so some, some, some other place, you know, and hmm. that, is a, that is a beauty of a multi-category, multi-brand company. Huh? And probably learning things that you wouldn't learn if it was all focused on one category. <laughs> Yes, and, o- and also because of the amplitude of Nestle, we operate in 187 markets, around 187 markets. So uh, y- you have the opportunity to get in touch with uh, so many different cultures, uh, so many different kinds of consumers. And again, then you learn the difference between the how we, you know, about the superficial stuff, how we may all look very different from the surface, but you would also learn that deep inside we may be very similar, all of us, hmm. we all, from a marketing point of view, be in the same territory. You know? A good pertinent message today. Yeah. Uh-huh. Kike, did cool. you always know that you wanted to, to work in brands? Uh, well, not necessarily. Something that I always knew is that I like storytelling. And again, when you, uh, from the very beginning, the stories and powerful stories, they always uh, intrigue me in a sense and, in, and impacted me in a sense. So, uh, so when you like a storytelling, when you like a story, you can, you can nurture that interest from many different angles. You may end up in the world of filming. You may end up as a copywriter in the world of, uh, of, uh, in the agency world, uh, or a writer, or you may turn yourself into a brand manager. Uh, uh, and in my case, you know, that is, that, that was the path that I took, brand manager, you know, and you know, for me, there are many definitions of what a brand is, but it's still one that I believe uh, holds on pretty well, and it's still very relevant, is that, you know, a brand is, is a product, of course, but a product with a compelling story. And that is a dimension of brands that I always really like and always attracted me, how to better build compelling stories uh, for our brands. And, and, and today, that is probably something that is more important than ever. You know, consumers, uh, well, this is a very anthropological thing. We have always 
as human beings being being attracted to stories. Since mm. the days when we were around the fire, you know, you when we were living in caves, you know, stories were always fascinated us. And that is uh, also, in a sense, that is uh, something that we need to reconnect with, you know, to even, I would even say, to understand, to learn again the fine art of telling brand stories because communications for for brands for some reason during the last years turned very product oriented, very promotional. And uh, today we have such fascinating opportunities in that arena that, you know, that is something that uh, uh, we need to work on. But again, going back to your question, stories, 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 brands, the two day are so well connected and that is why I ended up in the world of brands. That's right. I mean, I talked to someone this morning about brands and saying, you know, a brand is part of the product. In a way, the reason someone chooses something, identifies with something, obviously there will always be some product uniqueness as well, but that brand mm. forms a huge part. Yeah, that, that two should work that. together, no? And yeah. uh, it's amazing how you will still see in the world of brands that uh, eternal discussion between product versus uh, story, product, you know, or the physical dimension versus the emotional dimension. And I always believe myself that it shouldn't ever be one versus the other. You know, that the two should, should work together. Uh, that is not an easy thing to do, though. Yeah. Uh, how can you uh, connect that two? Uh, can you seamlessly connect that two? And uh, that is probably one of the most difficult uh, challenges uh, to crack in the world of brands and in the world of marketing, you know. And what do you think from the career that you've had then, given that you've always been in brands, what's kind of been consistent? We'll get into a bit about what changes, but what's been consistent in, you know, that stood the test of time and been one of the most important things? And is it just that storytelling? The, I would say the, at the end, it always, you know, the answer to your question will always take me back to the importance of the of the stories. You know, and, and what happens is, you know, the, the, the how, how we communicate, how we do engage with consumers, that has dramatically changed and is dramatically changing. I will dramatically <laughs> continue to change in the future. Maybe at a faster rate. Yes, and, you know, and, and certainly the pace is, uh, is uh, getting faster and faster. But the power of the story, uh, the power of that core story that you want to communicate, and you will certainly communicate in many different ways, that is still something that has endured uh, 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 the, uh, the, you know, the, the, uh, it still holds on pretty well along all these years. You know, the power of the story, the, and, and many other things, you know, that probably, and forgive me for this, they look a little bit more executional, but the, the importance of building your story on a strong, uh, true, Mm. real deep human truth you know the power of insights for example which is a uh, another discipline that needs uh, some sort of a rebump you know uh, I'm not seeing insights that powerful now being activated you know in marketing uh, the power you know the the, the importance of uh, staying or keeping yourself you know sharp you know being sharp in what you want to commu to communicate to consumers Consumers, they do have too many things to worry about nowadays. Uh, to rather spend time uh, trying to understand what the heck are you trying to communicate to them. So, uh, you know, the, the fundamentals of marketing are still holding on pretty well. Hmm. Is the routine? fundamentals of marketing and the importance of storytelling, you know, versus the uh, different, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the executional elements uh, Those change. of the different platforms that now we do have available as a way to engage with consumers. No? As someone gave me an energy, principles remain the same, practices change. That's for sure, I would see. And, 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 and being uh, marketing a social science, you know, a combination of uh, art and science, that for me is something that uh, looks quite fascinating. You know? That the fun fundamental, the foundational elements of our discipline they are still again there are still more there are, i'm even, i would even say they are more important than ever hmm. because in a world when everything you know seems very fluid and in a world when everything seems to change so rapidly it is important to have very critical to have your foundational the foundational elements of your brand uh, uh, 
the strategic elements of your brand, of what, what you want to do as a marketer, you need to have them clearly defined. Do you think in general in the market that's been lost a bit in the last few I would say so, yes. Many, and you why? know, the, the, be, because of the, the, uh, the needs, uh, the challenges that we face as uh, marketers. For, for example, in the social, in the social digital world, you may need to be a, uh, Lightweight, it makes sense, you know, lightweight communication, uh, you need to be fast, uh, you need to be snackable, you need to be, uh, uh, you need to be opportunistic sometimes, uh, and all of that is important, uh, and, and you should be, of course, again, you should be opportunistic and snackable and everything that you just mentioned, but you should always uh, remain yourself uh, 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 strategical. You should never lose sight of... Uh, uh, of your brand strategy, what are you aiming to uh, uh, to achieve? You know, what is that post? How that you know that that positive impact that you brand you want your brand to uh, 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 to generate? You know, in consumers uh, uh, in consumers' lives, you, you shouldn't lose sight of that. And many marketers they do in the uh, while dealing with all these changes, uh, uh, they lose sight of their strategy, and then they turn their communication and not just their communication, they turn their brand building approach is extremely tactical okay and that sometimes turns into a big danger because you know tactical may take you to uh 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 uh, some what i call brand diseases no one is for example brand schizophrenia no brand schizophrenia now is a very popular mental disease right amongst many brands brands that they are not consistent they are not coherent they're just racing to the moment and then so how how do you how would you approach it then where a brand is able to stay nimble be reactive be opportunistic but have a process flow so that it does make sure it's tying in with its fundamentals and it's got yeah how do you how do you actually achieve that either in general or how do you achieve it at nestle but or or something that we do have uh, at Nestle, and i do believe we have uh i say that we do have one a very strong uh, communication framework uh, a communication framework should it be, you know, complicated? That complicated, I would say, it should be. Uh, 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 it should be sing- single-minded in the sense that it shouldn't be. Uh, uh, I would say too inte- intellectual, just for the sake of being intellectual. Okay. But to have, uh, you know, revolution starts with language, and to have a common language for us, to have. Uh, a common approach to brand building and a, a, and a communication framework that we are now use we now use almost everywhere in the world. I would say everywhere in the Nestle world has been fundamental to, for us. So, do you uh, mean like embedding that in the culture of Nestle so that absolutely. everyone, every employee, yes. understands? Yes, you know, giving our marketers and our uh, agencies, creative agencies, the freedom of uh, not just of a of a tight brief, the freedom of a tight strategy. There is nothing better for creative. Hmm. You want to fly, you want to shake the tree, uh, you know, start from having a tight, well-defined uh, brand strategy. That for me is fundamental. It strikes me a lot of successful companies where I've spoken to people, they focus as much on the internal communications as the external communications because having the team all understand everything is, is almost just as important because every single team member has the ability to put a message out there. Otherwise, you will brand. face, uh, you, you will not, now it's probably easier than ever to face uh, chaos. Chaos in the sense that imagine, you know, being, being orchestration, uh, probably one of the uh, uh, bigger challenges that we are facing now. You know, you know, we, when I, when I started, you know, my, my my days as a marketer, that was not that long ago, but it was years ago. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, now you know when I look at the uh, look back, it it, it it was fairly easier. You know, right? That you had fewer contact points. You had uh, that model, the full service agency model. You know, working with you. But now, when you have so many different uh, uh, contact points, so many different platforms that you can activate with different uh, content requirements, uh, there are different. some there are some platforms when you need to communicate every day. You may need to uh, see the snackable pieces of content, you know, not on a daily basis, yep. on an hourly basis. Yep. 
Uh, and but be they, responsive uh, to things. Uh, yeah, and then, but uh, with uh, with a different tone and manner. And, uh, tone and manner in the sense that different platforms might require different, slightly different ways of uh, communicating uh, uh, your brand message to consumers. And then, to, you know, to connect all those, all these pieces in a way that will still uh, help your brand to go in the direction that you're aiming your brand to go, that is not an easy thing. Does that have to, so this is kind of a two part question. One is, how do you stop being paralyzed in that scenario of, oh God, look at all this that we have to do now. And then the second question, and maybe I'm partly answering, but looking for you to kind of confirm or, or, mm -hmm. or, or go off. Do you have to let go a little bit, trust that you've given people the framework and, the, and then go, you know what? I'm not gonna be able to monitor every little thing that's done. We need to release and give a little more flexibility on some of these channels so that people can respond. Uh, absolutely, but again, you know, for me, there is no better way to give people the flexibility that to ha to have a, to give them a tight brief okay. to have a tight and that is a beauty. Yep. You know, uh, uh, it's like how copywriting works. If I tell you as a copywriter where the edge is, then as usually happens with good, good copywriters, you will you will you will go there. Yep. You will play on the edge. Yep. But if I don't tell you where the edge is, Could if I don't tell you where the cliff is, then naturally what you will do is you will play safer. So again, if you want to play bold, if you truly want your brand's communication to uh, play bolder and to shake the tree and to, if you want to give your communication partners, you know, your social platforms, the, uh, the freedom to, mm. to try to explore, give them- uh, the boundaries. Yes, give them more than boundaries. Give them, you know, a clear direction, uh, a clear point of view, period. You know, fascinatingly so, if you don't give in any clear direction and you let them go, from my experience, they will turn to play more conservative. So Kike, what keeps you up at night? What what worries you as a marketer? What are the challenges? Well, uh, several things. First, uh, uh, there is there are two dynamics now uh, happening in the world of uh, uh, engaging with consumers in what refers to a space as where to engage with consumers. We see that certainly so now there are more possibilities in the sense that we have uh, platforms, social platforms like, uh, well, you know, starting some years ago, we have, of course, a YouTube and we have Facebook, but also we have Snapchat. There are several new places where we can explore, where we can uh, we can play, we can we can we can engage with consumers. But on the other hand, some other traditional, more traditional, but yet still very important places are uh, are being challenged. Like for example, you know that traditional TV space without blocking, for example. So in a sense. Uh, which, by the way, ad blocking will is already moving, as you know. It's not that moving; it's already there from the traditional space to the non, you know, to the non-traditional digital space. So, one of the things that is keeping me awake is uh, awake at night is that there will be fewer and fewer spaces, literally spaces, in the future uh, where to engage with consumers. Because at the end of the day, you may have the best creative in the world, but if your ad, if your piece of content is blocked, it's over, game over. You know, it doesn't matter if it was good or it was bad, no one will see it. So that is one thing that is keeping me awake at night. You know, there are some opportunities though related to uh, experiences. Now, how can we think about creating new ways to, uh, uh, for us to express for us to communicate to consumers and to create new opportunities to uh, generate uh, engagement experiences with consumers. So that is one thing. Then the other one is uh, uh, to get consumers' attention, you know, is getting more and more difficult o o o over time. There are so many, uh, uh, they are engaging with so many platforms, so many, uh, so many screens. Uh, it's very hard. You need to be. You need to. You need to. You need to tell a beautiful story. You need to. The, the the power of the story is essential. But now, if you don't engage with consumers, you in the first two or four, two to four seconds, to three seconds, it's over again. Uh, then data is another thing that is keep keeping me away, awake at night. You know, we Too have much of it. yes, we have massive data, uh, which you know it, it looks to me like you know uh, the dream. Nate, 
the dream turned into a nightmare <laughs> yep. because, you know, for years we were dreaming as marketers, how, you know, I would love to know more. Uh, so now the, the, the challenge is how can we, how can you avoid drowning in, in, in data and, and, you know, versus understanding the data? Uh, Do you think there's instances happening where there's become an obsession with data, people focus on the ones that can give them the metrics that they can count on, then gloss over the other ones because it doesn't have the same data, but actually they're missing huge opportunities. Yes, yeah, certainly. this whole element uh -huh. of persuasion and you not necessarily be able to measure everything down to the littlest bit, but at a reporting level, people are requiring, well, hold on, I know I can get this data now. Yeah, certainly so, and the, the, the uh, you know, so at some moment, you know, marketers uh, stop thinking. You think it's being less creative because of data? Yeah, sure. Yeah, and that is something that we need to uh, we need to deal with. Uh, yes, I would say so. There another uh, 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 another thing is you know that is keeping me awake at night is about you know purposes. How can we how can we build from our brands purposes of a higher level? You know. Uh, we know that uh, uh, higher level purposes uh, are being more and more important for consumers. Uh, uh, and this is something that is keeping me at night. And another thing is the uh, dilemmas that we are seeing today in many places, you know, there of this locality versus globality, you know, local versus global. And there are some uh, social, so social and political tensions there. And this is something that will surely... Uh, start to play a bigger more dramatic role in the world of brands and we need to be prepared to uh, we need to have a point of view about that you know social versus you know local again versus uh, versus uh, uh, global uh, then again something that I already mentioned but it's worth mentioning again you know how can how can we uh, 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 keep our brands agile while at the same time having a, a strong strategic uh, uh, approach. That is something also that keeps me awake at night. Then, you know, speed, you know, things are changing uh, so uh, so rapidly. Fluidity is another thing, you know. Segmentation was for, year, uh, very, for years a very useful tool in the world of marketing, but now I'm starting to, not to question, but at least to... Uh, to think about what is the what is the impact of uh, consumer fluidity in uh, in the world or in a way of doing things when we marketers we heavily relied on segmentations, you know. So uh, you know people were behaving in this particular way or this other particular way, and now we realize that for several reasons you may behave in one way uh, today and in a different way tomorrow. There is this. Uh, uh, amongst younger generations this increase uh, again fluidity uh, and that will impact again the way we are we are we are we are we are dealing again with data we're dealing with consumer understanding you know a bit of a dip into the future but with everything that you've said can you kind of estimate what you think might be different in three years time in that approach to to marketing what do you think we'll have learned do you, do you have in mind some shifts that you think will will have happened in three years time uh, there, there will be two forces. On, on, from one angle, things will turn very exciting or even more exciting for marketers, you know, in the sense of having all these different ways on how to uh, engage with consumers is giving us, uh, a, I would say, a strategical, tactical, and creative opportunities that we never had before. Uh, it's, it, it's like, for example, in the world of, in the world of social, there are now there are n you will not see the time limitations that I had myself when I started my career right. yeah. in the world of marketing. I I, I kind of still recall how many times you know I, I, there was a need for me to tell a copywriter, "I'm so sorry, I love your story, but you know there is, I had only I have only thirty seconds or sixty seconds, and that was a real pity." But that is not necessarily uh, a limitation anymore. Some of our uh, some of our best uh, creative and more engaging pieces of content they are they are in they are long form pieces of content uh, so that is one thing that will change then uh, this tension of global versus local huh? and this tension of uh, uh, 
of more artisanal versus less artisanal and uh, yeah um does that come down to story i would say something that is already changing dramatically it's uh people you know the the social platforms are giving the possibility of consumers for being very politically active yep and something that we are seeing right now is what will be the role of brands in this uh Mm, hyper political world do you think that comes back down to storytelling a bit because the artisanal brands are conveying the me- people are understanding more quickly what those brands represent and what they they stand for is that what you think is drawing some of the appeal to them and as larger brands get better at storytelling through these new channels well you know there is there is in a virtual in in, in a virtual world there is this there is this need for disconnect as you know there is now a this increasing tra- trend of you know disconnecting, getting very real, very earthy, soil, yep. earth, uh, touching all these dimensions, seeing, you know, transparency. Those are elements that will continue to be very important in the future, and we need to be prepared how to deal with uh, with them. Um, we don't compete against you know. I, I, I was I, I started my career in the world when my brand message was competing against other brands, other messages from other brands, mm-hmm. and that is still the case. But you know, for consumers' attentions, we are now primarily competing against pieces of content or content that is having been necessarily created by brands, that is either by bloggers or uh, or NGOs or governments or, or consumers. Yeah, and 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 sometimes. Uh, th- not sometimes, you know, what I'm seeing is that their content is, is many times very relevant, is creative, creatively very powerful. Uh, uh, the production's values are getting better. So now there is a there is increase, uh, in, uh, there is a in, in massive uh, complexity there, you know. Again, the, you are not just, you are competing against a plethora hmm. of many different uh, Many different uh, pieces and kinds uh, kinds of content. You know that was not the case of the past. Then the importance of the you know this fluidity. You know the the all this always connected world is giving a massive power to uh, some cultural trends. You know cultural trends are come and go very fast, and they may have the power to uh, 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 favor your brand, or they may have the power to keep put you in a, in, a, in in some trouble. You know, and that is something that. You need to keep you. You need to keep yourself as a marketer aware, not just of traditional communication, but all these forces they may play against in how your favor you, or against. How you, do you, know? you guide yourself through that? Now, what we are doing is we're including we're including the more and more intensively the cultural context, and uh, you know, into our uh, uh, strategic work. And I would even say, probably in the future, I, I'm, in the political component may be. Really? It's something that should be included in your strategic work because it's now. Look at what is happening in the U.S. Yeah. You know, several brands now they are uh, uh, already acting and, and and sharing their point of view. No? And so, with bringing us on to back to, to social and influencers, and obviously that's how we got in conversation with each other first. It's it's bringing a more collaborative approach, and it's bringing you creative thoughts and feedback from these i mean ultimately these influences are consumers as well what do you find most interesting and exciting about that uh i would say you know f- f- first you know give uh you know having the possibility to have influencers influencers in your ecosystem for in your brand ecosystem give your uh give, will give probably will give your brand the opportunity to have a face or different faces so this uh, human element is important. It's not a big faceless uh, thing. It's uh, uh, also it gives it it enriches your brand with different points of views because you don't want an influencer, you don't want a blogger that is uh, uh, working with you to have exactly your point of view. Uh, uh, and that is what I also believe will happen with brands in the future. Brands in the in the, brands they shouldn't be perfect they shouldn't be perfect we have been for many years looking for perfection yeah and brands as human beings we may have uh, we 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 may we may do good but we may also make mistakes and that is not necessarily a bad thing you know so uh, we may learn 
we may change our perspective, we may get better, over, hopefully get it over time. And that is what I like about of this ecosystem of having the brand, having influencers and uh, as a way to uh, not just expand the reach of your message, but also to, to, to get to richer messages. It's almost like as well, they're slightly consultants. Uh -huh. helping yep, with the yep. feedback yes, for, loop for sure. from from them i think often people think of uh -huh. influence and just think of the outbound mm -hmm. but actually it is it's a feedback loop for brands mm -hmm. cool no that's great so one last question and then we'll go to a special quick fire round uh -huh. you've had a kind of you've been coca-cola nestle two huge brands what, what one piece of advice would you give to someone starting out their career in the industry now is there the one thing that you would point them towards mm. I will say you need to be sure that you love, <laughs> do what you love to do. That will be my, my single piece of advice. You know, you, uh, and it may sound uh, like uh, uh, a commonplace, no? But it is true because, uh, you know, marketing and brand building as yes, many other disciplines, it's a hard working discipline. Uh, um, and, and so you need you, you truly need to love what you do because you will face some you will save you will face some score you know you will score yep. some very good hits you so you will face some uh, glory and fame hopefully but you will also face some uh, difficult moments you may make mistakes you don't you enjoy will, it yes <laughs> you, you you may learn from those mistakes so my very first uh, piece of advice would be you know try to uh, uh, do what you love to do you know wake up every morning and you know feeling great that you will have the opportunity to work in my case you know in a world of brands you know pretty solid because there, advice. Is, because there is hard work there huh? pretty solid advice right. and there are there are ups and downs so uh yeah perfect thanks kike well so we finish up with our quick fire round this is first thing that comes into okay. your head are you ready yes i'm ready best business book you've read well uh you know I, i've read so many business books but you know Probably a good exercise will be to go back to one of the very first uh, business books that made an impact in me as a, I would say a, at that moment as a professional in the making, and that was probably Positioning, Positioning by uh, Alris and Jack Trout. I still remember the first time I read that book, and wow, maybe. You know, I've not read a, that, so I'm gonna. Well, you gonna should. May, some dimensions of the book may look. Uh, 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 it may, they may look that they have already been, in a sense, surpassed by events. Right. Huh. Uh, but it still was a foundational book for me. And uh, I, you know, I, I read it like years ago. I will probably read it again and see if I can find some golden nuggets, you know. In that. Yes. Perfect. Uh, name someone who's inspired you the most. More than one person, I will say, is an attitude that inspired me the most. Mm -hmm. And I will see these... Uh, this attitude of, of never, you know, never surrendering, you know, just uh, if you believe that you are doing the right thing, just go for it, you know, never surrender. Perfect. Your favorite band? Well, I'm a Gen Xer, so I may <laughs> have a long list of bands from the 80s that I will <laughs> you can, go with I can the share you with you. Uh, <laughs> everything from the 80s, you know, the Perfect. good, the bad and the ugly from the 80s that I like. I'm a <laughs> what about a favorite movie? I again I will go back to a movie that I watched years ago. I love Citizen Kane. Okay. Perfect. It's one of my favorite. Uh if you didn't work in this industry, yes. what else would you be doing? Sounds like you're always set to go into this, but what else? I would go into film. Right. Yes. The creation, the storytelling. Yes, the story That's the recurring yeah. theme. Uh what's a tiny thing that annoys you the most? Uh, a tiny thing. Uh, too much focus on details, you know, not focusing on the, uh, not on the big picture. thing and the big picture, but the small details. Um, there are some small details people and the big picture people are more on the big picture one. Cool. I hate to, I hate to, uh, <laughs> waste time. I know that sometimes the devil is on the details, but we tend to look and go for perfection and marketing is not about perfection marketing is a social science we forget that we tend to forget i always that. think as well with that focusing on the detail something that i've seen common is that 
people have a plan stick to the plan get so focused on the detail that they can only do the plan and they don't take account of the new variables no about that, that but are coming into the, the moment that, your yeah. plan will be ready will be already too late yeah and things have pro- we, things we have probably already changed yeah <laughs> uh if you had a time machine when and where would you go mm. ah what a question I will probably go back to the Roman times. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> Perfect. Emperor Kike. <laughs> we'll run with that. Uh, this will be an interesting one. If you were running for office, what would your campaign slogan be? Stop bullshitting. <laughs> Fake news. <laughs> um, all right. Last question. Beluga, blue, humpback or killer whale? Ah. Uh. You know, the killer is always attractive, but probably it's, it will be too aggressive and politically incorrect. I, uh, between the killer and the blue, it will be great to have a, a killer blue whale. Can you imagine <laughs> I that? Will it too. will be a massive thing. Huh? That's the creative in you. Yes. Perfect. <laughs> Kike, thank you very much for your time. It's been fantastic. My pleasure. Cheers. Thanks for listening to the Whaler Podcast. Be sure to check out the next episode where I'm chatting with Keith Weed, the Chief Marketing and Communications Officer at Unilever. <laughs>